Earlier this year, Councilman Bob Ward announced that he would not seek re-election, essentially retiring from city government. He's been on the council for 30 years and has been a part of a lot of major decisions. We sat down recently to talk about what he has done for Santa Maria and what Santa Maria has meant to him. Well, thanks for sitting down with us. I appreciate it. We, we very much appreciate it. So we're here talking about, um, you know, you're at the end of your city council service. Yeah. You're sitting in your council chair, your current council chair. That's it, yeah. Um, tell us what brought you to the decision not to, to seek election. Well, 30 years I've had the pleasure and the, and the honor and the privilege of, of serving for the community. And one big influence is my wife. <laughs> but I'm getting older. Uh, you know, it, it takes some time and energy and things like that. And there are some people with maybe some... Uh, smarter ideas, I'll say, but then part of it also is the social issues that local governments and government in general are having to face that other than providing police, fire, sewer, water, streets, recreation, da 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 da, that you're getting into that are, that, you know, as an old gentleman with some old uh, ways, I guess, uh, becomes annoying when people are talking about social issues. Cities don't build houses for anybody. And, and so that's, that's a social issue and all the other things that go along with that. Uh, so, anyway. So it takes back 30 years. You were, you were active in the community. Yeah. You're, you're real influential in getting soccer and basketball stuff going, correct? Very true. Um, so what, what just made you decide that you wanted to seek office? Okay, well, I came here in 76, uh, July. Well, they were just, the mall was opening the, that month in August, actually. Wow. And so it was kind of amazing. Came down here, and I was very involved in, in Reno. I was a sales rep for Zellerback Paper Company. I was, in the, I, was in the, uh, I was the president of the Sparks J JCs. I was the northern representative for the Nevada JC, so I was very involved in a lot of community activities at that time. And I worked the United Way campaign in, in Reno also and helped set up their Little League program. And so came down here and got very involved as the manager of Zellerback Paper Company here. Certainly I got involved in the chamber and the EDA and things like that. And so uh, part in the United Way, I mean the first week, uh, you know, someone said, hey, come to lunch and then needless to say, you get the hook. And, 30 years later, I'm still in the United Way. But uh, I was very involved, and uh, Bob Miller, who was on the Recreation and Parks Commission at the time, moved to Napomo. So he resigned, mm -hmm. and I was appointed to fill his slot in, I think, May of 75 or 76. It must have been 76. And so subsequently, being in the chamber and other things like that, saw some people then that were running for city council that I didn't necessarily have the same philosophy or the idea. A couple of them were not necessarily business people. Mm -hmm. And since I was on the Recreation Parks Commission at the time, uh, Joe Hagerman, who's a legend around here, mm -hmm. was, the, was the chairman at the time. And I stopped him and I said, you know, I'm kind of thinking about running for uh, city council. And he says, you should. And I said, Okay, Joe, are you sure? Are you serious? He says, No, you really should. So, I took my <laughs> I took my wife to the San Marie Inn a couple of days later at lunchtime, and I said, Sweetheart, uh, what would you say if I uh, ran for city council? And she said, What are you going to give up? Well, I was on the United Way board. I was on uh, the youth soccer, mm -hmm. uh, EDA, uh, Chamber of Commerce. As a matter of fact, I wound up as a chairman of their agribusiness committee on the chamber and a couple of other committees that they had at the time. So, and I said, well, I'll give something up. I never did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, at that time, I guess I told her that I would be uh, maybe two terms. I, I was going to ask. I, I heard was it. never going to intend to be on the city council forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's partly just kind of like, you know, you said a few years ago you were going to be a, a lifetime. Right. And it, it's just, you know, it's time to Bow, to, bow out, uh, let some other people have that opportunity. And it is, you know, it's been a lot of time consumption away from the family and the family 
they get involved with people saying, well, I saw your husband, would you tell your husband, or would you tell your dad, you know, he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> My son agrees with him. <laughs> anyway, so talk, to, so. talk to us a little bit about your philosophy. What, what, is, what, do you bring, what did you bring to the city when you wanted to, uh, to run? What was well, the difference? I think just from a business aspect, that these are the things that cities should provide, and I, it's not my money I'm spending and that it, we need to be efficient and effective and be customer oriented. And so from that aspect, that, that was it. it. You hire the right people, and the city has had some dynamite people running the operation. Right. I've worked for four, <laughs> four city managers. Mm -hmm. going, you know, Bob Grogan was a manager forever, and then right. his subsequent, his last three replacements, and you realize that you know the city managers, I forget when Bob took over, 50 or 60 or something like that. I don't know how many there were before that, but that's kind of amazing. Yeah. And then I've worked with seven mayors. <laughs> and I don't know, I was trying to count up the council members. It's, you know, 17, 18, or 20. Wow. And some of them became mayor and things like sure, that. So, sure. so anyway, my philosophy was I was always, a, this doesn't make you rich and famous. But I tried to approach it as, okay, I look at the issues, make the best decision with the information that I have, and I go from there, always remembering that it's your money. Right. It's not my money I'm spending. And these are the things that cities always are, that's mandatory that we do. Fire, police, sewer, and water, and those things, and all the other stuff takes a back seat, has to take a back seat. So, so, so how do you think Santa Maria's done in, in that? That vein in the last 30 years? Well, you know, uh, times have changed and they still are changing. You know, saying, as I say, they were building the mall, uh, it was just opening, and there was a lot of controversy about that. Right. And, and so the evolution of malls and shopping now, in total, the perspective of, of that has changed a total, you know, a lot. And uh, just, uh, I guess, from the standpoint of, I mean, personally, one of my first few years was state water, and I'll just hang my hat of all the things that I think I've been involved in is bringing state water to Santa Maria and serving nowadays that has proved to be, you know, alcohols for drinking and water for fighting over and it's, <laughs> and it's been pretty darn good. The quality of our water and the quality of the of our basin has consistently stayed because we've we've been able to supplement our sucking it out of the ground along the state water, which is pretty good quality right. and knock on wood, you know, <laughs> hopefully if we get this the major A uh, on top of that for future generations, because California is growing and the source is from the north, right. uh, you know, just as long as everybody understands it's not my water, it's not your water, it's God's water, and wherever it can wind up to do the best, because, you know, there's the north south fight all the time, mm -hmm. and the northerners have the water, and that's the way it is, but it isn't their water alone. I mean, we've got the systems to get it transported for farming and living and, and drinking and all that other stuff. That's really what I think everyone's got to look at right. from my perspective. The way I understand it, this state water was kind of unique. There was a lot of other communities in the area who didn't want to get involved in state water at all. Yeah, that's true. And it, it, one of them is Orca. And I cut tons of friends and, did, and this and that that, that live in Orca. And then in some of the shortages, and then they've got Watt, uh, Watt 02, which is supplemental water if you're going to develop something. Right. Well, uh, people are going, well, you should give us the water. And it's kind of like, well, wait a minute. You know, 20, 25, 30 years ago, we made the decision to pay for it. Now, and I'll tell you my simple example when people talk about it. When San Luis Obispo, and they had people come down here and tell us it's growth inducing bring state water on. And we had people down south coming up and saying the same thing. Uh, when If we all had participated in developing 
the sizes of the pipe probably would have been about this big. Right. And then when the San Luis bowed out, market didn't go in, and some of the others, then the pipe's that big, and it only holds so much water. Sure. And it's not cheap. And so we paid for that infrastructure, and then people were saying, well, gee, we'd like to buy into it. I just tell you, Logan, you write me a check for what you would have paid for the infrastructure in that. We'll let you tap in. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah. And so uh, from that aspect, it's unfortunate or fortunate that we do get, and you know, there's been those, well, you, it's not at capacity and blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. That's just the nature of things nowadays. But when we do have good quality water, I'll tell you what, I, you know, my water softener has been buried in the landfill for probably 20 years. I pulled it out and I had a lot of people because on the campaign trail was, well, there, there were a couple of things. They were arguing about how much it was going to cost. It was going to double our rates and I forget it was like 20 or $22, probably up to 40. But from that, if prior to that, I had replaced my hot water heater several times. Mm -hmm. The fixtures in the house had deteriorated. You're using more soap in your clothes. You're, and I had water softener mm -hmm. and uh, other things. I was cycling with my son, so we had a water bottle in the kitchen. We weren't drinking the city water because right. it had so much uh, harvest. And so if you figure that I'm not buying a five gallon thing of water a week, I'm not putting five 50 pounds of salt a week, which was a $5 bill, to right. hauling it, lugging it, pouring it into the system, sure. and just the hardness, the beating on your clothes when you're washing them, sure. and uh, utilities, and killing plants. If you're using your water softener in your house, you don't water your plants or put your goldfish in that stuff. Sure. So that $20 difference was a better quality of water right out of your tap versus all the other stuff that you had to do. And especially if you're drinking bottled water, I mean, that's a buck a bottle, we'll figure out what that costs you. Sure. Sure. Versus state state water, which is expensive. So ended up paying a Anyway, that's, that's so I, I, my mantra is that I, you know, I supported that and I'm happy that we, we have helped reduce the amount of water we're taking out of the aquifer. Right. You know, for the yeah, I think it's a great example. You know, one key thing about being with the, with, uh, the city so long is the growth of San Bran. Yes. You know, when you started, I understand there was like the 30, population was 32,000. When I first drove by, down 101 to come here, it was 32,000 population in wow. 1976. And then in, in 86, when I was elected, the first vote that I ever voted on in the city was number one, <laughs> to increase the salary by 50 bucks for city council because the population had just surpassed 55,000 and that was the demarcation line the, by law that you could increase salaries. We had to, uh, right. that was it. And then also it was for automated uh, garbage pickup. The previous year they had, uh, the city had $660,000 worth of workman's comp from the waste or from the uh, garbage unit wow. pickup because they were having injuries and things like that. So I'd say now nowadays, you know, if you break a, a hangnail pushing the computer to make the truck pick up your garbage, I don't know what that's worth, but it's not six hundred and sixty thousand. <laughs> so you've really had a hand on how Santa Maria uh, has grown and where it's grown. Yeah. Um, what what do you think Santa Maria's gonna look like in another thirty years? Gosh. Uh, you know, we're surrounded by agriculture, you would say, and that's, I'll just say it's good and bad, in that the agriculture change and shift from broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, and all the things that historically we were growing mm -hmm. up till about 86 when strawberries became very prevalent till now, and the labor intensiveness of strawberries Created a mushroom of population coming from different countries and ethnicities and all those kinds of things. Sure. Uh, but we've managed, I think, within the confines of what we've got, again, uh, we've been collecting money to upgrade 
our sewer system on a continuing basis. We're not in debt there. Mm -hmm. uh, our landfill, which has been optimized now, uh, and those floors were, you know, we bought that. I won't say to bargain, but I mean in anticipation of the things that are going to go in the future. Uh, and we're not in debt on that. And so from those aspects, we've kept above and beyond the infrastructure for the community. Right. And, you know, you can't do anything else unless you've got the infrastructure and you have to come back and replace it. And affordable housing, we've done a dynamite job better than anyone else in the, around and trying to minimize the impact, you know, in neighborhoods and things like that with our code enforcement and strong emphasis. And I think public education about what you put in the sewer line, you the oils and the stuff like that and those kinds of things. And then trying to make everyone aware that, you know, 20 people living in a house is a little, a little bit of a strain on everything from, from the standpoint. So that's, it, you know, I think we've done uh, a pretty good job. The roads, you know, we're doing, we do the sanding certain areas that, you know, they set that up years ago because replacing roads is just extremely costly. And, and so, uh, of course, we're going to get rain today. We're going to have potholes all over <laughs> Hex Half Acre. Right. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's, our roads are, I put them up against, them. I've been around communities around here, and ours are as good as or better than anybody else's. So I think from the, the water, water quality and our wastewater treatment plant and our our landfill, our recreation and parks department, bar none, is off the Richter scale with the parks that we offer and, and the programs and the things like that that have grown. And I've been part of participating in that and, and those kinds of things. So it's, uh, I'm going to be involved with the soccer group now that I'm leaving city council. I won't have a decision. But to give my background of the volunteers, including myself, that did so much to alleviate the city's responsibility. And now there seems to have been a shift to, well, we want the city to do this and we need to do this. And it's kind of like, well, wait. Parents need to be involved rather than dropping little Bobby off sure. with the coach and see at the end of the day and hope you get home okay. So, is there anything we haven't talked about that you want to get out there? Gosh, uh, I don't, you know, I don't think so. It's just in, in trying to prepare and get stuff out uh, uh, of, you know, things back many years ago, uh, you know, we, we did things, um, had controversies, needless to say. Uh, and the one thing I'll say about the community is, the valley, I'll say. And I've always said that we should be one city. Mm. And I, I've said that forever. And some of my very dear friends, and I tell in Orca that we're going to annex you and mm -hmm. things like this. But, uh, and it's kind of like, well, we don't want you guys running us. <laughs> I, I think we should be one valley of 130 or 40,000 people, sure. whatever the hell we are. Uh, Guadalupe can annex us then. <laughs> but the reality is we all live, drink, eat, right. have family, have sports, and this and that, and use the valley, share the valley, and we should have seven or nine council members, and I don't care if you want to do it district at that time, right. then everyone has a say, because I'll guarantee you, Orcutt can't stand alone without Santa Maria. And they shouldn't. It's one big valley, and we should all be one, maybe not happy valley, but we're, we're all using the same water, although they, you know, they get some supplemental water from us because we do service water through, um, I can't think of the, the water company out there uh, that most of work is tied into. Right. It's a regional landfill that the city operates. And it's not going to change. And recreation facilities, and you've, you've heard some of the groups out of work had come down and complain sure. that our fields are sub, subterranean. <laughs> it's kind of like, 
well, why don't you ask the mayor of Orcutt exactly what he's going to do for you and your soccer groups. How about, do you have any regrets? Do you have anything you haven't been able to get done that you wanted to get done? Uh, no, I, I think just getting people involved. It, and again, you kind of ask, because I always said, uh, if you're going to have to live by the laws, then if you make the laws, you can live with that. <laughs> and it, it, it's, uh, you know, just like with the family, and that you've got to be involved in some way, shape, or form. We all have our personal areas and our personal businesses, but taking the time to be here to talk to us. I, you know, I have people call and say, oh, I don't like this and that. And I say, well, come down and talk to the city council. Well, I don't have the time. I, you know, Oprah's on or something. It's kind of, or Monday night, Tuesday night football or whatever. It's kind of, you know what? I'm only one vote. And you expect me to pass on the issues that you have. Right. Now, if it's something that I could call, or I could say, you know what? Call our public works. If you've got some problem with your sidewalk or something, right. they'll come out there. Or letters to the editor mm -hmm. always make me laugh <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. That <laughs> all you have to do is dial the operator, come into here, and someone at some point in time will come out and fix your street light. And then people call and say, well, my light's out. And I say, well, you know what? We have a hotline for that. Take the number off, off the pole, it's number, mm -hmm. call it in. And I've had people call back and say, gosh, they came out three days later. <laughs> and that's kind of simple, I guess. You know, sure. It's just you, you have to have a little bit of initiative to participate in what's going on in your community. Right. You've and really been an advocate of trying to get people to be more involved. In the yeah. community. I think that's pretty cool. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Orrick's decision to retire meant that this election cycle, the council was guaranteed to change. To find out what the council does in the future, make sure you visit cinemary.com or follow Logan B. Anderson on Twitter. So can you say it for us one more time? What's that? Play ball. Oh, play ball. <laughs> <laughs>